All right, look, everyone on Earth has made a clickbait video on the Titanic, and I'm not gonna go down that path. With that out of the way, let's get into the nitty gritty of it, that being a little backstory. Here we go. Legal lifeboat standards weren't really a consideration throughout most of sailing history, primarily because any ship large enough to warrant lifeboats before 1850 had what's called a ship's boat. A sophisticated name, ship's boats were basically tiny ferry vessels. Rowboats designed to carry passengers or seamen from the main ship to the shoreline because the sailing ship was too large to get near the beach. Pretty much every moderately sized vessel had one of these, for example, the Mayflower. Now we come upon the era of steamships, lifeboats come onto the scene. We've all heard the tale of a man stranded in a lifeboat for months after his ship sank, but this was a much less considered thought back then, unless you're exploring the Arctic. You see, lifeboats weren't intended to function as potential long-term people carriers as we see them today. Instead, they were seen like ferry boats. The British Board of Trade believed that because ships usually traveled around the same predetermined routes, there would always be a ship nearby to pick up passengers from a sinking liner. And with the rapid advancement of watertight door technology and the increased size of ships, ships were now able to hold passengers until help arrived, even when sinking. They expected ships to stay afloat long enough for assistance to come. This mindset isn't entirely based in naive imagination as you might think. Historically, it had proven to have backing, so you're wrong. When the RMS Republic and SS Florida collided in 1909, lots of ships came from all around to pick up passengers, and no one went down with the ship aside from the six who died in the initial collision. The Republic sinking was what convinced the world that major disasters at sea may be a thing of the past, outside of wartime of course. Even when the Titanic sent out her first distress signal, there was another liner as close as five miles away, close enough to see her lights and distress rockets. That ship was, most likely, the SS Californian and would go down in history as what might have been. The rapid advancement of wireless communication in the 19th century allowed for the installation of Macroni Wireless, a network that linked ships at great distances for distress calls, weather information, contact with ports, and Sirius XM. Macroni Wireless began a real turning point in nautical history, as sinking ships now had an easy method to contact each other and save their passengers from the dark abyss below. The communication network became especially trusted after the Republic disaster, Without it, the Carpathia wouldn't have gone to save the Titanic survivors, and Rose would have met the same fate as Jack. Among the community I refer to as the boat people, it's common knowledge that the lifeboat standards set by the British government were insufficient in 1912. The required number of lifeboats was based on tonnage, not passenger capacity, and thus White Star was within their legal limits to have 20 lifeboats. In fact, they were only legally required to have 16. I see a lot of people say, Titanic's crew barely launched the few lifeboats they had in time, so if they had more lifeboats, it still wouldn't have changed how many people died. This isn't a terrible point, but remember, back then, they thought lifeboats would primarily carry passengers from the sinking ship to a rescue ship, not carry passengers for long periods. This meant that had another ship been close enough, <clears throat> in theory, 20 lifeboats would be sufficient in going back and forth to rescue most of, if not all, passengers from the sinking ship. They also could have used lifeboats from the rescue ship in this capacity, as seen by the SS Ile de France in the Andrea Doria disaster. Yeah, the video's coming. Of course, because there were totally no other ships in the area, we'll never know for sure. What matters is that, to White Star Line at least, they had a sufficient number of lifeboats to meet legal standards and their own morals. Pretty low morals. The concept of lifeboats for all passengers and for long-term survival came after the Titanic, quite possibly as a direct result of it. Now, the reason I put slightly logical in the title of this video because back then, the concept that lifeboats would serve as ferry boats was so widespread and accepted that it wasn't actually taken into reconsideration until the Titanic disaster. Now I'll briefly mention one of the stupider reasons companies had less lifeboats available, and that was for vanity's sake. They believed too many lifeboats would clutter up the deck and make passengers feel cramped. This was most likely never a primary motivation, but it still goes to show that the concept of appearance is everything isn't new. Anywho, I'd like to thank Tom Linsky of the YouTube channel Part-Time Explorer for his help in reviewing and editing the script for this video, and also for his incredible knowledge of the subject that probably saved me from thousands of comments of you internet people correcting me. Link to his channel in the description. So what did we learn? Well, for once, we actually learned something. The Titanic didn't have enough lifeboats for many reasons. I'm not gonna recap it because you just watched the video. If you don't get it, go back and take notes. Alright. 